a number of setups. Our most consistent setup was a hopper dropper system. The hopper dropper uses a floating line, 9 foot leader and 2 flies. A large buoyant foam based hopper with a weighted nymph approximately 2 to 3 feet behind. Use an improved clinch knot to attach the nymph to the hook bend of the hopper. Hey Mike, you want to fish that um, hopper dropper rig up in the shallow riffle here. Okay. Um, Kinda start on the, yeah, on that line. Start start in there and work out from that point. Okay. And uh, if that hopper even thinks about setting, there, we go. there oh. you go. Beautiful. Little Good fish. Good job. Yeah. Well done. Uh, just goes to show you, work over that pit. Eh? Absolutely. Yeah. That's a little better, Rainbow. Yeah. A little better size. On the bead again. Subtle bead. The uh, hopper barely moved on that. Yeah. You're on him right away. Every once in a while, I have reflexes. Okay, I'm just going to hand land him for you. Are you, you going to take him? Yeah, I'll okay. take him for you. There I you got go. him. Thank you, sir. Decent rainbow. You have slack. Not a monster, but we'll take him. I love that bug. Uh, there we go. Oh, pretty. That olive tungsten. Very chrome, huh? Tungsten yeah. bead head right in yeah. the tip of his mouth. A little olive tungsten bead. That's beautiful. A tungsten. It's a great fly. Pretty fishy. Eh? Yep. Yep. So we're I'm going to let him go. Okay. Well, let's go get another one. All righty. 15th of July, the water was up on that grass bank. That was a great bank for fishing big foam flies, big stone fly invitations. Fish would come up and just smash them, or occasionally you get fish to just come up and sip them, literally catching fish where the edge of that grass and dirt is. Current seams are another hot spot to try. Seams are formed by any obstruction that deflects the water, including rocks, logs, or fallen bushes. Fish on, fish on. It's coming at me. I don't know how big he is yet. <laughs> that he took. That one he took the. Uh, F, no, uh, the bead head. Yeah. Yeah, he's hasn't really shown himself yet. So. Yeah, he's. Uh, whatever he is, he's not happy about it. <laughs> oh yeah, now he's. Just trying to clean the deck here. Oh, that looks like a good fish. Looks like a rainbow. Looks like a rainbow. So we were just, Dee had put us in a back eddy here, kind of a lazy Susan setup and great for this hopper dropper technique. Just cast it in and work it close to the banks and either hopefully get a take on the dropper, uh, sorry, on the hopper, but in this case he took the uh, dropper, the small bead headed nymph. This looks like a good rainbow. Good rainbow here. These are just very strong, healthy fish. Yeah, he's got that little bead head right in his snout. Oh yeah, this is a good fish. Oh yeah, I'll take some of these. I'll take these all day long. <laughs> God, they're so healthy, so full finned, so, so strong. <laughs> oh, this is a nice fish. And again, that hopper just pulled under slightly. I have no idea whether it's a little fish or one of these quality rainbows and browns that inhabit this spectacular place to cast a fly. That's a decent fish. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Strong. I think my hopper is going to need a little desiccant. <laughs> Been drowned. There he goes. He just doesn't like that big black net. No. I'm steer him towards you. Reel him in a bit more. There we go. Good job, D. <laughs> this is why you come to the Bow River. Just an incredible fishery. World class. Arguably the best trout stream in the world, some say. I'm inclined to agree. Let's go do that again. Work the banks. So we put together some of the flies that we've been using fishing here in, in October on the bow. Um, starting f here with the streamers, I've got uh, a Medusa, which is a fairly large streamer. It's actually uh, uh, tied as a steelhead pattern, but we fish fairly large streamers a lot on the bow. A light colored large fly like this we'll often use on the more cloudy days, um, whereas on the bright days you'll see the fly next to it is a clouser. Um, a little bit more subtle, not quite as large, and on a sunny day like today, 
we'll use those more often than the large Medusa style flies. We've been using dry flies with bead heads underneath them and you'll see here this is called a chubby Chernobyl. It utilizes foam and synthetic hairs. You'll see rubber legs. A lot of the patterns that we use on the bow have rubber legs. Uh, they tend to be more effective than the more subtle flies. Um, next to it here is a mutant stone. It's a little more visible. It's got indicators. It utilizes just about all foam as opposed to the synthetics. And the large banded rubber legs, when they're floating in the water, there's lots of movement there and it'll attract fish to eat them. This fly here is called a tongue stud. It's, uh, it's very effective on the bow. It, uh, we use it about two and a half, three feet underneath the dry flies. It's got a tungsten bead on it, very slim profile. That's probably one of our most effective little bead heads on the bow. And in the fall, there's a lot of water boatmen around. This is a little bead head water boatman pattern. Uh, it's just peacock body, a little flash along the back. And you saw us fishing that behind a streamer or by itself in some of the slow water portions of the river. These are a good selection of flies and are all patterns that you want to bring for fishing on the bow in the fall. One of our top producers today is a simple nymph called the tongue stud. It is an excellent choice either by itself or with hopper dropper combinations. Here is the tying recipe for this deadly fly. Be sure to tie your tongue studs in a variety of sizes and colors. Black and brown are two of my favorite options. Pulling it. Oh, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, uh, he ate the bead again. Want, you want to use a net D or? Sure. It's kind of a fairly regular fish. It's actually a brown, brown, brown trout. trout. Oh, good. Well, yeah, that's, yeah. that's well, that's a good sign. How'd you like that professional fish identification? <laughs> it's okay, I was doing that with a white fish. So you got it, Yep. Oh, thank you. Let you do the honors, Mike. There we so are. How long is that lead between the, about three feet from the hopper down? Yeah, if we're fishing for the boat like we are, kind of two and a half, three feet distance yeah. between the bead head and the, uh, and the hopper, it's kind of a good average length. Uh, if we're fishing shallower yeah. water, we'll shorten it up. Sometimes we'll go a little bit longer if we're fishing deeper water. Yeah. But for kind of average fishing from the boat, we want to run about that distance. <laughs> and there he goes. <laughs> That's okay. He's taken off. But uh, lots more where he came from, and it was nice to see a brown. Great fishery here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mark Melnick from the new Fly Fisher Television Show. If you enjoyed that video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Also, we're uploading new videos all the time, so hit the bell to be notified when the next one goes up.